Okay, so um, this is actually going to be a little bit of continuation of what we did last time, to, just to finish that tutorial because the tutorial was not finished completely. So, um, so um, okay, so w w one more example, which again I started in another tutorial but uh, didn't completely finish is uh, the signature complex. Um, so uh, let's uh, recall. Uh, so assume M be a um, say closed oriented. Uh, topological manifold I'm not assuming right now it's a smooth manifold I'm just assuming it's 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 a topological manifold uh, but it's otherwise closed oriented topological manifold of dimension 4k All right so then we have this uh, intersection pairing, you remember? So this was a pairing H2K. Um, so this is like, you can think of it as integral cohomology group, for example. H2KM cross H2KM. Z. So this sends a pair of classes here, like alpha and beta, to you. You take the cup product in cohomology and evaluate it on a fundamental class, uh, which is uh, given by this orientation. So this is a this is an integer. Now um, by Poincaré duality, we know that this map is uh, non-degenerate. Uh, so let me write it. Poincaré uh, duality easily implies that this map is non-degenerate. Non-degenerate is a non-degenerate pairing on this middle cohomology, uh, and of course, it's symmetric because of uh, dimensions. Uh, it's chosen; it's uh, it's, it's symmetric uh, and symmetric. So this is a quadratic form on this uh, uh, middle integral cohomology group. Uh, so uh, you can take its signature, right? So then uh, we define, if I, I defined it some time ago, then the signature of that, right? Okay, so I use notation sigma of M um, to be the uh, signature of this pairing. Signature of, uh, I mean, this quadratic form of the ball. Um, quadratic form. So, in other words, uh, this is uh, so. By, by those theorems, you know that you, when you have this uh, quadratic form, so this is the number of positive, say, eigenvalues. Uh, you write it in some, some canonical basis, on this, on some basis. You can write it as positives and negatives. Number of positive uh, minus number of negative. I won't tell you what. 
just say number of positive minus number of negative, you just fill in. You have to. I, I, I won't say eigenvalue because that's not eigenvalue. So, uh, so I write it as uh, E 2K plus minus um, E 2K minus, uh, where E 2K. E2K. So this is the um, uh, the 2K Betty number. So these are Betty numbers. Uh, is of course equal to sum of the two because this is not degenerate. So they add up to right? 2K plus plus E2K minus. Okay. So this is the signature. Of a map. So, so signature is a topological invariant, right? So sigma is a topological invariant. Mm, so not uh, um, signature is a topological invariant. So. Uh, now, if your manifold is smooth, right? If M is smooth, uh, of course you can write this in terms of uh, the wrong cohomology. Um, sigma in wrong. Uh, Homology can be realized as follows. So we have this map pairing uh, the wrong group in the middle. Okay. The wrong M to R. So, um, uh, so in this case, if you have a form uh, omega, oh, I just use R to beta, it doesn't matter, uh, a class. Uh, class of form here and class of form over there. So intersection pairing is just integration and the cup product is replaced by uh, wedge product. So this is alpha wedge beta over n. So it's a 2k form, 2k form, 4k form, you integrate it uh, and then you get a number which is, belongs to R. And so this is a uh, again, non degenerate bilinear pairing on middle of the wrong homology, and you can take its, uh, you can take its index as the exact over there. So, an index of this pairing uh, is exactly of uh, quadratic form. <clears throat> exactly, sigma of that. In fact, uh, this is because of the Rom's theorem that relates uh, uh, these groups. So, so if you tensor these uh, integral cohomology groups with R, you do get this Rom group. So this whole thing is obtained by tensoring this thing with R, and then you get this uh, Rom. Okay, so we have that incarnation uh, in terms of the Rom. Um, now, of course, for this M has to be a smooth. If M is not a smooth, we don't have such a thing, right? So that's good. So what we want to do now, we want to uh, say that actually this is now a index of an, of an operator. So this is index of an operator. So, um, so that's what we want to do next. Uh, is that uh, the signature is the index is the index of an elliptic complex.
Okay. So how can we how can we um, see this? Um, okay. Well, uh, we have to first show that. There is a relation between this uh, between index and harmonic form uh, between signature and harmonic form. So let me erase it here, and we have to use Hodge star, of course, for that. So any questions about this? Okay. So now let me just. Uh, Uh, consider what star. So, uh, star, we know that it goes from uh, middle uh, coma, middle, uh, middle uh, forms, 2k of m to 2k of m, right? Oh, because it's 4k minus 2k, it's 2k, right? So now, star squared. Is equal to in general we had a formula minus one. Do you remember the formula for star squared? Star squared is minus one to the power p times n minus p in general. This is equal to minus one to the power two k times four k minus two k. Anyhow, this is uh, identity. So that, that's really good. So star squared on, on the middle cohomology is just identity. So I can, I can use this star to decompose the middle cohomology into two pieces. So decompose H. So the middle cohomology is H2K. Um, the wrong. Um, Actually, I, I can decompose uh, the whole thing. So let me just uh, start with uh, decomposing omega 2k and, uh, as uh, omega 2k plus and index sum omega 2k minus n. Right. Well, here is uh, eigen. Uh, plus one eigenspace of a star. In other words, a star of omega is equal to omega here. And star of omega here is minus one. So here, a star of omega is equal to minus omega, right? Because, because a star squared is one, so I can, I can, I can write it as, uh, as uh, can decompose it. Uh, into two uh, subspaces like that. And of course, this goes into cohomology. You can uh, decompose the cohomology group also. Uh, it's the wrong of M. You can write it as H2K plus of M index sum H. K minus of n, right? Uh, so, um, uh, okay. Uh, so, what we want to say now? Uh, so, I want to say that actually, uh, on this part, uh, intersection pairing. Um, uh, okay. Maybe and uh, and also I can also go into um, I can also go into um, harmonic forms and decompose the space of harmonic forms based on that, right? So I just say I, I would say harmonic two um, K is equal to M to decompose as harmonic 2k plus of M UX sum uh, harmonic 
2k minus of that, right? So, of course, by uh, Hodge theory, we know that dimension of this space is uh, the, the 2k petty number, right? So, dimension is equal to B 2k by Hodge theory, right? Hodge theorem tells us that uh, this is the case. Um, so, what we want to do uh, now is to show that the intersection pairing is positive here and is negative there. So, dimension of this is uh, equal to uh, exactly B2K plus, and dimension of this is B2K minus. So, that's what we want to do, right? So, the goal is now to show that uh, this dimension. plus 2k is actually equal to b 2k plus and dimension of our harmonic 2k minus is equal to b 2k minus. So now um, there is a relation between um, this uh, intersection pairing and inner product. Right? And uh, so what, what is the relation? So we want to show this, right? So, but we know that um, the uh, inner product of alpha star beta is equal to integral alpha wedge beta over n, right? That's that's just we have this relation between um, between um, inner product of forms star operator. And intersection here. So this is this is exactly intersection pairing on the right hand side, right? So now, if um, alpha is equal to beta belongs to this part plus one eigenspace belongs to uh, this plus one eigenspace harmonic um, plus. Okay, so it means that the star beta star alpha is equal to alpha. So because this is a positive definite inner product, left hand side is positive, right? So alpha star alpha is equal to alpha alpha. So this is positive. I mean, if uh, it's non zero, right? So let's assume it's non zero. That's the only thing that matters. Non zero. So it, 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 this implies that inner product of alpha base alpha over m is also positive, right? So it just shows that uh, the intersection pairing is positive on this space, and intersection pairing is negative, and then by, by similar reason on, on the other, right? So um, similar, so so so, uh, i.e., the intersection pairing. I should have introduced a notation for the pairing, maybe sigma of alpha, the whatever intersection pairing. Um, is positive on, on this component. Whatever positive means, it means that on any, any particular element, this quadratic form takes the value positive. Not that any two elements are here positive, but the quadratic form on that part is positive. Is positive on this harmonic plus 2k. And of course, if a star of alpha is minus alpha, which you are in this component, then it's negative definite. So, so it's positive definite, I would say, on and the negative definite 
on um, R to K minus N. Okay, so that's it. So you have, in fact, uh, this uh, decomposition in fact is very nice. It really decomposes this quadratic form into these eigenspaces that we want to decompose. So everything is okay. So, um, okay, so this proves the claim that, in fact, signature is um, um, okay for, for now, of course. We have related signature to these harmonic forms. That's uh, first step. They're not done. I mean, we, we, we claim is claim uh, is that signature is index of an operator or, or index of an elliptic complex. We're not done yet. We just relate the signature to harmonic forms. This is the relation between signature and harmonic. We need to do more, of course. Uh, because we don't have an operator yet. Which operator are we talking about? No, no operator here. So, we have to. so now let me continue. So next, uh, we have to um, complexify these uh, forms. I mean, we have been kind of thinking about it uh, all along. I mean. Anytime I wanted, I said this is complex value forms, and I, I, I chose real. It doesn't matter. So, but just be very explicit that I complexify. We can just take omega m c to be equal to omega k m tensor c. I mean, it really doesn't uh, matter. I can just write without uh, this complexification sign. So. I can just say omega k m c is you know this one. So, but that, that, that's that's okay. So we just okay. So now we are working with uh, complex forms. So uh, then I can uh, kind of uh, get the right kind of star. So this is i to the power. So this is something you can work it out each time, but you can never remember exactly what this. Uh, the right uh, sign, I mean, right uh, power is i to the power p times p minus one plus uh, n over two star. So this goes from uh, omega p uh, c to omega maybe uh, n minus p. So that's how it works in general, but I'm assuming n is equal to 4k anyway. So you see, I, now, now it's inevitable. We have to work with complex forms because I have to multiply with right powers of y. So this is okay. Once I have that, then I get that. Uh, so let's call this operator gamma. Okay, so then uh, again, you can check that gamma squared is equal to one. So that's elementary check. So this is very nice. So this gamma squared is equal to one. And uh, it also uh, commutes with, um, with uh, Laplace gamma delta actually. It, um, well, before that, it anti commutes with this d plus d star operator, which is uh, minus d plus d star gamma. You can check uh, both uh, are purely algebraic statements, you, you can check them. And um, Then what you can do, you can, because gamma squared is equal to one and you have this condition, then you can, you can form a, a double complex. So, so you, you can decompose this, uh, all, all forms uh, in together into two pieces. Those that are i and one plus, so, so notation let say um, maybe lambda plus 
to be um, or lambda minus to be plus minus one eigenspace of gamma on uh, differential forms. Okay. So then you do get a complex like this now. Divide the elliptic complex. Uh, so we get uh, e plus d star. So this now goes uh, from uh, lambda plus to lambda minus. I mean, uh, this is really a space of smooth sections, right? So this is subspace of dx sum of, uh, you know, omega c p of n. E begin equal to zero, right? It's a, uh, it's um, yeah. I mean, it, it's really a subspace of this. Uh, in fact, uh, it's a sp space of a smooth sections of a bundle because this operator is purely algebraic. So you you cut down a, a sub bundle of exterior powers, and then you have this is indeed the smooth sections of that uh, of that bundle. So this is an this is an elliptic operator. Uh, and that is, is an elliptic operator. So now the thing is the index of this elliptic operator is exactly the signature. So that's what we want to prove, right? And uh, for position is the So that's a uh, dimension of kernel minus dimension of co kernel, right? So proof. Um, X of D is equal to dimension of kernel. Minus dimension of co kernel. So um, there is one place that, that's important that's the middle part. If you work on the middle part, uh, what you get? On middle forms, this uh, omega in case C. And, uh, you know, we decomposed it as uh, omega 2k. Well, I mean, there is this part of lambda plus that lives in the middle part. So plus, say, x sum omega 2k c minus n. And on the middle part, so on the middle forms, uh, the way that this d acts, it sends this component to this component, and the other one in this to the other one. So it switches the things. And so uh, now that you are uh, computing um, and the kernel of this d, if you restrict it to the middle part. Is exactly, um, I mean, um, on, 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 on. right, so on this part, uh, omega 2kc plus is exactly the space of harmonic uh, forms uh, which pay positively. Uh, so this is what I denoted by R uh, 2k positive. Of n. Uh, but we showed that dimension of this is exactly uh, the B2K plus that 
goes into. So this is dimension of this piece. So maybe. So dimension of will be restricted to that piece. Um, is B to J, I don't know how, how, how to write like this, I wrote it twice. And dimension of co-kernel be restricted to omega. I mean, going from, well, I mean, co-kernel is really, I mean, on, 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 on the middle part, it's really dimension of kernel going from here to there. So let me not write exactly because my notation is not perfect now, but I just want to be to allow myself a little bit of ambiguity. Sorry. So this is equal to b to k negative. So index the middle part is equal to b. Two k plus minus b two k minus, which is signature of m. So now, what you have to do, what is left, is to show that on the other components they cancel each other. There's a cancellation going on. Right. So this is. Uh, I give us an exercise, uh, knowing everything we know, uh, it's not difficult. So this is the exercise. Um, and in all other dimensions, so th that is dimensions different from 2K, uh, there's, there's a can cancellation to the index. The first part, we use Hodge theory to, to prove this that uh, signature is given as index of this on that part. That's uh, what we did for the first part. And then you have to check that there's a cancellation on, on these other parts. So, uh, I mean, this is a very basic result. I mean, this is, uh, this is uh, really playing with uh, just, it's, it's a good example of this uh, Hodge theorem. And um, this is very important. Uh, this was observed by a TNC here already uh, in the first paper. And uh, so the corollary is that signature of M is equal to index of an operator, index of E. I mean, again, of course, I, I wrote it uh, again. I mean, the point of that this index uh, thing now is that. Uh, it's very much like differential forms, except that we are using a different decomposition. If you're looking at differential forms in, in, a, in a different way now, right? So that's a, a, it's, it's a different decomposition. Do you remember a result which was similar to this? That I did before? I didn't do Dirac yet. Well, I, I, I talked about Dirac a little bit uh, in the flat case, but I didn't do Dirac. But we, I proved the result, which was exactly the analog of this uh, and, and a simpler version, actually. Which uh, topological invariant we proved uh, is an index of an operator. Other yeah, we did other characteristics. So this uh, definitely you should compare this result with, with the result uh, that um, I proved the first. So let me write it because I mean, um, so recall, show. So what did we show? We showed that for any 
uh, in fact, uh, for any uh, closed oriented Riemannian manifold. We needed all these pieces of that are closed or yet remaining mindful. The Euler characteristic I of M is in this turns out to be index of an operator again, right? This was an index of uh, D plus D star. So, so the operator is exactly like what. I use here is the plus the star, but the complex is different. It's acting on, on a different uh, kind of uh, vector bundle. Well, I mean, this vector bundle again is constructed out of differential forms, but it's a different bundle. So it, you can say it's the same operator, but it's acting on a different bundle. So, but let, let me write it here. So, um, um, well, um, I. Euler characteristic is the index of an elliptic complex. This is what we showed before, right? So the elliptic complex was this zero, uh, omega zero of m, omega one of m, omega n of m. And um, yeah, so what was this uh, parity operator that we used over there? The parity operator was just usual even odd, right? And then we got all the evens, all the odds, and you got a complex. And so, so in this case, gamma was uh, equal to even or odd. Uh, so it singles out the even part and odd part, but here gamma is more subtle. It uh, singles out uh, eigenspaces of this Hodge star, but in, in a subtle way because there is this I factor. So this you cannot, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not very easy to see it in terms of. Okay, so anyhow, so for, for the proof of this, you remember we had to use, uh, you know, Hodge theorem because. Uh, Kernel of D plus D star is equal to Laplacian. And here you might also wonder why uh, why kernel of D plus D star has to do with harmonic forms. Well, because D plus D star squared is just harmonic forms. So, 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 we should, so these are details you have to go through. I mean, just. I have a question. So I didn't understand what you mean by kernel of D restricted to uh, when I took that class. Yeah, I mean, just uh, because this uh, certainly sends, I mean, kernel, so it's a direct sum of these pieces, right? Just take the kernel that comes from that piece. Right, but uh, D, capital D, will take omega 2k plus 2. Uh, it, it sends uh, omega 2k plus to omega 2k minus. That's what I'm a bit confused because capital D is D plus D star. D yes. of an element in omega 2k plus. So D of an element in omega 2k plus. We'll take it to omega 2k plus 1. No, no, no. No, I mean, we are using this decomposition. Oh, yeah, we are using the decomposition. The, the direct sum of all, all of them. We are using direct sum of all of them, yeah. Yeah, so you will have to have other terms in there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, right. I mean, just uh, try to understand the proof in this case. Yeah, there, there I agree. There you have like a, you have a tuple of things there. Like the yeah, but, then, uh, but I had to use Hodge theory to prove that index is, in, in fact is equal to uh, the, the alternating sums of these. Uh, Homologies. So I, I relate it to uh, the, so you just do that in this case and you get this. So I, I can explain after the class too. So that's all. Well, one has to think about it first. Yeah. Okay. Now, 
So I think uh, this, um, this is not a bad example. So another example I wanted to do is uh, uh, to show, uh, so there was something I promised to do this uh, Hodge decomposition, uh, at least uh, some statements of Hodge theory for compact Lie groups, but we do it. So um, this is Hodge theory for compact groups. So, um, so the point is that in this case, actually, one can do, uh, one can check a lot of statements of Hodge theory without analysis. Um, I mean, the algebra is complicated, but the analysis is not very. Okay, so our assumption is this let G be a compact connected uh, Lie group. So it's compact connected Lie group, and uh, this G. The Lie algebra of G, uh, the Lie algebra of G. So, um, so we need one definition. Uh, a Riemannian metric I'm going to use notation G. It's kind of risky, but that's okay because we have we have a group around, so that's okay. A uh, Riemannian metric G on G is called by invariant by invariant. Well, I mean, if it is invariant under the left and right actions of the Lie group on itself, if uh, L X star of G is equal to R X star of G equal to G for all X belonging to G. So this is the uh, left regular representation or action, and this is the right action. So it should be invariant on the left. So basically means that if you have two points on the Lie group, you translate it on the left, the distance between these two points remains the same. The transit on the right also remains the same. So that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a nice feature. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, of course, uh, left invariants, I mean, left invariant uh, uh, Riemannian metrics, Riemannian metrics on G, right? We have this uh, one one correspondence between this and um, I mean positive definite inner products, right? So let, let me just call them inner products. Inner products on uh, G, which is Lee G. But this is obvious because. If you have an inner product on, 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 on the Lie algebra, you can left translate it and get an inner product on any tangent space, right? And then that inner product is left invariant by definition. And uh, conversely, if you have a left invariant Riemannian metric on G, you can restrict it to uh, Lie algebra and you get an inner product on G. So between left invariant Riemannian metrics on G, and inner products on G, there is a one one correspondence. So if you insist on another invariance here, so uh, if you want uh, to have a bi invariant uh, metric, Riemannian metrics on G, then this is in one one correspondence with 
adjoint uh, invariant on, on the, the adjoint action on, on, on the tangent steps, right? Between this and uh, inner products. Um, G. So I write it like this uh, add. So this, this means that they are invariant under the adjoint action of, 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 of the right? So invariant under adjoint action. I mean, this is also obvious, right? Remember, uh, the adjoint action is a map from G to uh, automorphisms of, well, I mean, invertible linear map certainly of G. Right? So that's a, so this is a group, this is a group, and this is a representation of this group on this group. Um, so it, it's acting as Lie algebra automorphisms of, of the tangent uh, bundle at that point, which is the Lie algebra. So that's, that's the adjoint action. So that's very good. Now, this is a nice observation because it shows that on a compact Lie group, we always have a bi-invariant metric. So the uh, so lemma, now I can prove a lemma that uh, there always exists a uh, bi-invariant metric. I mean, Riemannian metric on a compact group. Right. So, how can we prove that? The average over the exactly. That's the key word is averaging. And because you have a compact group, we can always we can always average, right? So proof is uh, take any metric, an inner product. So because of y invariance, uh, it's just a question of uh, inner products on on Li. So uh, so take uh, any inner product zero on. G. So this, of course, it always exists. So because on I mean, uh, any real, real vector space, you always have an inner product, many inner products, and then average. Then average over action of uh, adjoint action. By this, I mean we can certainly now define something like this. X. And y, uh, by definition, is equal to integral over g. So I just take uh, inner product. So I just act by add. So add x, x, add x, y. I use the zero inner product, which is over there. And then I just integrate against the harmonic. So this is the harmonic. So we can integrate against the Harmagen in order to get to, to cook up a um, um, adding variant uh, thing. So by this correspondence, there's a one one correspondence between bi invariant demanding metrics. So there is always a bi invariant demanding metric on, on any compact Lie group. And there are examples on non-compact Lie groups that they, they do admit. And there are some examples of Lie groups that do not admit a bi-invariant metric, but that's not uh, what we want to do now. So what I want to do now is um, give you, first of all, a couple of uh, straightforward, I mean, in, but important examples. to feel a little bit more uh, at home with this thing. So here's one example. Uh, so let's, let's take G to be SON. In this case, Li G is SON. 
is a skew symmetric uh, trace zero matrices, right? So that's um, um, x belonging to M and R uh, such that x transpose plus x equal to zero and trace of x is equal to zero. So I have to produce a, 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 a kind of adjoint variant in a product on this guy, right? So here is this. Uh, one proposal. This y is equal to trace of x transpose x. So, um, first of all, is it positive definite? Yeah, it is Hilbert-Schmidt norm of, of this matrix. This is equal to sum a i j squared, right? i j from one to n, but x is equal to a i j. It's this one, so it's a positive definite. And you check that this is adjoint invariant. Okay, so well, I mean, to check that this is a journey variant, so let's check it. So I'm, all I have to do is to check that actually u x u inverse u y u inverse is equal to inner product of x and y, right? Uh, well, this is just by trace property, you, 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 you get that, right? Um, and um, do we need anything else? Um, oh, uh, and the fact that u is orthogonal. Okay, so just, just do it. This, you, you need the fact that u is orthogonal for any u belonging to SOM. Go to the formula and check it. Um, there is a similar, <clears throat> sorry, there is a similar formula for uh, SUM. Um, in this case, uh, I can just take this y, uh, but I have to take x, y, trace of x star, the adjunct of transpose is trace of x star y. Again, in this case, you notice x, y is equal to, sorry, x, x is equal to some absolute value of a, i, j, squared on to n um, and uh, what and uh, yes if x is equal to a j the rest of the calculation is simple as, as, as in this case uh, okay now now what so I have a question for you guys uh, I want you to see if there is any other bivariant metric or inner product on SO or SU beyond this. So, of, of course, up to scale. I mean, question is any other, is there any other bivariant metrics? on uh, SOM or SUM. I'm going to ask you, okay, so I'm not, uh, this is not free. Sometime I will ask you. 
Okay, so why we are doing this by invariant uh, metrics? Um, the, the reason we are doing this by invariant metrics is, uh, is that Hodge proved a very nice result for these things. So in his book, actually, um, Hodge looked at this case. He proved that, so it, it, it's a calculation that we write it down, um, which I'm not going to produce. So I don't know how involved that calculation is actually. So is it easy or difficult? I'm not sure. It's purely algebraic. So there is this uh, proposition. And the proposition says that if a Riemannian metric is by invariant, it is a by invariant Riemannian metric. I believe this has nothing to do with compactness of G because you, you're assuming that you have a, a by invariant Riemannian metric. On G, and of course, uh, any Lie, Lie group is uh, has orientation, uh, is orientable. I mean, uh, and then you can choose any of those orientations. Doesn't matter for this statement. If G is a bi-invariant demanding metric on G, then um, you know exactly harmonic forms. You say a form is harmonic if and only if uh, it is by invariant. Then um, form harmonic P forms and G is uh, in one of correspondence with uh, with by invariant. P forms on G. Okay, I mean, of course, a by invariant P form means this, right? Again, LX star, LX star of omega equal to omega, so that's equal to RX star. Of omega, right? So this is uh, by invariant forms, right? And uh, I can continue this correspondence. Uh, by, uh, so let me write it like this. So let me write it like this. So this is uh, forms, so let me put it on G. So this is by itself on one correspondence with which P G star I. So this is the ad invariant, uh, you know, uh, exterior power, peak power of G star. Uh, so now why that's the case. So this is uh, this result of Hodge, but uh, this is easy. So let me tell you why this is the case again. Um, you start with left invariant, but it's exactly like what we did in metrics. You start with identifying left invariants uh, on uh, left invariant forms right? on uh, G. It's in one one correspondence with page P of G star. I mean, this is pretty clear, right? Because if you have a form, uh, you can just send it to a restriction of form to, to the origin. You get an element of HQ of the star, right? If you have a P form, you restrict it at the origin to, 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 to G, which is the tangent space of G at E. So you, you do get that. And if you have an element here, you can uh, uniquely left translate it. You get all these uh, P forms over the manifold, which is next so this and that is, uh, they are the same spaces for more correspondence. And then what you can do, now you impose another invariance, but then this another invariance is going to be translated into add invariance because, yeah. So this, is, this, this statement is easy, this statement 
it, it is a very interesting calculation, but it still is algebraic. I mean, there's no analysis, nothing, but it is an interesting algebraic calculation. So that's what uh, a Hodge proved in his book. Actually, you can read it in his book. I think chapter three of his book is, uh, is where he discusses this. Okay, so what? So what does this show now? Uh, so then uh, Hodge said, of course, um, so by Hodge theory, of course, then uh, we know that this space is canonically isomorphic to the wrong cohomology of G, right? Because harmonic forms are uh, so, uh, so which B G star at is isomorphic to the wrong cohomology, P the wrong cohomology of G. But now the, the interesting thing is that you don't need Hodge theory in order to drive this, uh, this isomorphism. So if you believe in this calculation, I'm going to drive this uh, without that calculation anyhow independently. And so it means that this statement of Hodge theory for Lie groups actually follows from purely algebraic manipulation and some, some ideas about the wrong conclusions. So that's what we are going to do. So that's what, uh, so yeah, I mean, that's a kind of interesting case where, yeah, some, some, some statements of Hodge theory you don't need analysis in the case of Lie groups. I mean, in homogeneous spaces and stuff like that. So. So let me do this. So that's uh, what we want to do. Okay, so I, I can just uh, just write one statement and uh, give you an idea of proof of that statement and then we know why this is. Okay, so now what we want to do, okay, so I, I, I can, I can uh, make this I can write proposition. So this is actually an old result of Chevalier and Eisenberg in the paper in, in late 40s. Is that um, the inclusion? Uh, so actually, yeah, I have to assume G is a compact connected group that uh, G be a compact the group. Uh, the inclusion of uh, HP star of G star at which we know is exactly by invariant uh, forms, right? By, by this observation over there. Inside um, P forms, P of G, right? Is, is actually quasi isomorphism of complexes, um, is a quasi isomorphism. So uh, let me explain. On the left hand side, the differential is zero now. There's, there's no differential on the left hand side. So let me just write it like that. I don't want to erase this piece, which is important. Maybe I'll just write something here. So here is the Durand complex, right? The Durand complex of this legal. Just uh, on a strong complex. And here, so there is this exterior differential, of course, we just, and then there is this complex. Uh, 
of this zero, zero differential, zero, and then uh, wedge n, g star zero, and then here we will come. So we have these uh, inclusions in this direction. Right. And uh, the claim is that if G is compact and co connected, then uh, this is a quasi isomorphism. So this induces isomorphism in cohomology. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And the proof, let, let me give you the idea of proof because uh, it's uh, interesting uh, independently from other things also. I mean, actually, this is a deformation retract of, of, of the unit top one. So, um, so let me give you an idea of proof. Sketch. Uh, so, first of all, you define an averaging operator in this direction. Okay, define averaging over, I mean, yeah, over, you, you can just say you're averaging over G cross G um, operation. So A omega P G to um, which P you star you I mean what you do you just average over the action left and right action of this group so that's um, uh, this is this one so this is point A P but it doesn't matter. And then, uh, well, I mean, this is uh, first of all going to be um, compatible with uh, with differentials, and uh, you just check that first of all. If you go, so let's call this inclusion i. So if you go by i and then come back, you are not uh, producing anything new. A composed with i is identity. Uh, and then. A composed by I is equal entity. Um, but uh, you can also check that um, actually A is obviously is going to be equivalent to 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 the original form. So let me write it here. And using homotopy invariance of Ron, homology. You can check that uh, this. Uh, Think um, for any omega belonging to omega p g um, host p form, you can check that a of omega is cohomologous. So this is cohomologous uh, to omega. So this shows that. Uh, now the reason for this is that this Lie group is connected. You can always find a path because you are averaging over this group. You can always find a path that connects your element to the identity. Action at the identity is trivial. But action at this is exactly what defines this kind of art. So there are some details, but I mean, uh, this is the idea. If you can read, I mean, the proof is not, it's not difficult. You can read it in the original paper of uh, Shivali Eisenberg. So. 
I mean, for example, one of the nice things here is that a bi-invariant form is necessarily closed, and, and it's just uh, and all these things. So, I mean, you, you don't need any any new differentials or anything. Okay, so I, I erased this part, but so if you believe in this result, then uh, what it shows, it shows that uh, without using Hodge theory, now we can really prove that <clears throat> actually harmonic forms, uh, harmonic P forms on G is exactly as known. So, come on. so but putting everything together, Using this, uh, you prove that for any compact G group, G, I mean compact connected, I'm sorry, I should have compact connected, that's very important. If it is not connected, it's not true. Compact connected, I should have written uh, compact connected. Oh, yeah, it's here. Link group uh, harmonic P forms on G is isomorphic to Brown group, P Brown group of G. Without uh, using uh, the hard analysis in this case. The Any questions? Okay, no, ah, right. Okay, now, um, right. So let, let me give one example at this, uh, so that it kind of becomes more uh, tangible and something more, more, a little more understandable. Um, okay, so Okay, so here's an example. Uh, so let's let's take G equal to um, uh, UN. Uh, maybe maybe uh, SU, I'm, I'm not sure uh, which one I have to take. Do, do you remember the dimension of SU by any chance? Uh, yeah, yeah. As, uh, I mean, it, it's a real big group. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not a complex group. Um, squared. Um, squared minus one. You're close. I, uh, it's n squared minus one. The dimension of u n. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dimension of u n is n squared. But S uh, cuts down one, so uh, cuts it by one, so it's uh, quite much. Right, uh, anyhow, so um, 
we want to uh, produce some uh, bi-invariant forms over this. So now let the one be equal to trace of G inverse PG. Well, G, I mean, it's just a matrix in SUN, right? So you just take this matrix, multiply by its differential. I mean, this is a function, and then you take its trace. So that's a, so that's a one form. Define omega three to be trace of G inverse E G, and then wedge G inverse E G, wedge G inverse E G. And so on. So define omega two k plus one to be trace of g inverse e g to the power um, um, two k plus one. Right. So. Um, I mean, the last one I would say maybe is 2n minus 1, but I'm not 100% sure. 2n minus 1 is trace of the power of 2n minus 1. So you can check that, that these guys are actually by invariant. Oh my god. Um, 2k plus 1s by by invariant. Differential forms. On um, SUN. Now I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused about SUN and UN, so you have to sort it out for yourself. Uh, what happens if you go to UN? I'm not sure. Uh, but th this is the idea. And uh, in fact, The cohomology of this guy, H star of SUN, is, I think I wrote it once before, is the exterior algebra of this, uh, this guy, the one, one uh, I mean, in odd degrees generated by these odd forms, omega, um, omega, maybe. One minus one. Can you tell me what is one plus three plus five plus two and minus one? What is that number? This is high school math. What is that? What is this? Is the sum of all odd, odd numbers from one to two minus one? Uh, what's the easiest way to calculate? Two minus one times n. Sorry. N minus two n minus one. N times two n minus one is two n squared minus n. Really? That's when not you start your first with the last, you get to n. And then? Plus two, plus two. Oh, so the Gauss trick works in this case also. OK. So you can say it's 2n, and then plus 2n, huh? But, but how, how many? How many? Three? How many we have? But there are odd. So you yeah. cannot just do that. There's something in the middle that's left. Which one is the middle? And and are you sure? So how many we have here? No, oh. we don't have n. N over two or something of that order we have. It's just n square, right? Wait, what is the answer? Is is it n square? Just n square. Is, that, that's n squared, yes, yes. Very good. <laughs> it's n squared. Yes, that's what I was looking for, right? It's n squared, right? Okay, so now I, I, I know that I should work with you. 
I mentioned that t is equal to n squared, and I know that this is correct. And now this is really a cohomology of S1 plus S3 plus S2 and minus 1. So it's a cohomology of uh, products of uh, odd spheres. Odd spheres. There is a general theorem of uh, Hopf. Uh, Hopf showed that uh, for any compact Lie group, its cohomology is always uh, cohomology of products of odd spheres. So this is a very nice result. And in this case, we have exactly uh, these things. Okay, so uh, this uh, half is all, I don't need it, uh, but this is something which is useful. I mean, these are kind of related to chair classes, but this is a kind of omega 2k plus one or transgressed chair classes. We will see that later on. I mean, chain classes live on Grassmannians or cohomology of Grassmannians. These are only groups, but there's a transgression going on, so you can go back and forth. So these are transgressed chain classes. That, that come into definition of characteristic classes in chain classes. Okay, so this is later. Okay. So. We are okay now. Uh, I think uh, I, I wanted to do this Tolbo example, but it's just uh, let's do it later on because uh, let's go back to some analysis. It's too much now, algebra and topology. Any question? I, I think you might have said it at the start, but I missed it. Um, how do we interpret B, B, G as a Oh, how, how we interpret DG as a one form. Okay, so it's, it's really a kind of tautological uh, construction. I mean, uh, what it is, you, you just look at UN, right, as inside uh, N by N matrices with complex entries. And this map is just inclusion. So I call this map G. So, uh, so G, uh, so G is equal to G i j. Each G i j now is a function on, on, on your D group. Right? So G i j now all of a sudden you get uh, for free all these uh, functions from your U n to C for all. And then what is D G? It's just component wise D differential also. The differentials of functions, right? E G I J. Okay. And uh, well, then you multiply by this matrix. So G inverse D G is just this G I J and then D G I J. And then of course the, the entry of this guy you can just compute, right? So I mean, so for example, G inverse D G. KL entry is the sum G I K E G K uh, L over K. It's a mixture of functions and one form. So yeah, actually these one forms are uh, these one forms are globally defined uh, in one coordinate system like that. Well, not, not a coordinate system, but they are they are one forms. Uh, but it's very, it's, 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 it would be a pain to work in this language because uh, to check all the invariants and all these things. And of course, for left invariants, this is easy, or right invariants, but the other one you need the trace in order to show that it's by invariant. So these, uh, these objects actually easily give you harmonic forms. Harmonic forms. Right. I mean, the, the, this form is, <coughs> is it, it's a God-given form. It's called the more cartan form. So let me write it here. So <coughs> this omega, may, I'm not sure this is the right notation, but omega equals the G inverse 
Dg is a more recurrent form. Since, uh, look, you, you care to ask, uh, let me give you the general definition for any, com for any Lie group, actually, I can define. So, I mean, more generally, for any Lie group G, this uh, more recurrent form Uh, it's it's a Lie algebra valued one form on on G, okay? Uh, is a uh, Lie algebra valued one form on G. Well, this Lie algebra by Lie algebra we mean uh, G. So, so in other words, uh, w w what is it? I mean, you know, it's just um, so. Let, let me call it maybe omega. So omega So if you take any vector uh, V belonging to a uh, tangent space of G at some point, uh, at, at this point, uh, say G, I mean, so I, I, I'm calling X such thing, so that's well, maybe G. Okay, so now I want to define uh, a, uh, the value of this guy we got x on b. I wanted this to be an element of the B algebra G. What do you do? You just translate. <laughs> so that's equal to R, uh, so left uh, x inverse, uh, I don't know, a star. B belonging to T uh, G at B, which is G. So, well, remember this left, uh, let's, let's write it. I mean, left translation uh, from G to G sends Y to X inverse Y. So, this left translation sends X to E by this understanding. So I should say push forward, actually. So I have to push forward. But this is a diffeomorphism, so you can push forward. So I get uh, Lx inverse, I mean, star, you get from tangent space of G at X to tangent space of G. Yeah, so this is the more more cartoon form. And uh, in, in, in very abstract, um, Incarnation. Now you might uh, wonder what's the relation between this and that. So that's that needs to be checked. So this is an interesting exercise. So so exercise. In fact, for any uh, Lie group inside a matrix algebra, for matrix Lie groups, this corresponds. To. For matrix Lie groups. Omega is in fact G inverse DG, but now you have to interpret this uh, correctly. So, but I mean, in, in this case, we, we interpret it. Right? I mean, for example, uh, you can show that this matrix uh, for UN, for example, is a skew symmetric matrix or, or, or a skew Hermitian matrix, so that then as a result, it really lives in the V algebra not just somewhere abstractly matrix algebra. You can check that, but it's fine. This was a good question, thank you. Because we discussed this maybe quickly before, but uh, any other questions? So 
So uh, now our, our goal is to um, do this uh, spectral decomposition. So we go back to analysis. So we want to do a spectral decomposition for, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll just take um, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, prove the main theorem, but then we have to uh, prove even more. So any questions? No? Okay, so let's uh, continue with the spectral decomposition. So, um, so now remember we have this um, M is a closed oriented Iranian manifold and we have this E over M a uh, smooth emission bundle over M over uh, M and we have this P uh, from uh, C infinity of E to C infinity of E <coughs> C infinity to C infinity of E we have this uh, um, so P is uh, elliptic, self-adjoint, um, PBE, or actually pseudo, uh, of order B positive. So, okay, so if this looks abstract, you can have some very concrete case in mind. So here's an example you can have in mind. Uh, what's a good example of this scenario? We can take Laplacian and acting between from even forms to odd forms and things like that. Right? So take, take Laplacian, e.g. Um, yeah, I mean, you can take, I mean, simplest case actually E to be M equal to C, and then um, P goes from C infinity of M, yeah, let's be honest to God, Laplace to C infinity of M, and P is equal to this dot P. So this is a scalar Laplace, right? Scalar. I mean, this is already a good case. I mean, just uh, we can just think about this, right? Scale of this. Okay, good. So now, what we want to show, we want to show that. So, so let let me define now. Let e lambda be equal to um, the lambda eigenspace of uh, this p, right? The lambda. I use space, uh, so this is uh, the set of all, um, say, phi belonging to C infinity of E, such that P of phi equal to lambda phi, right? Of course, because, uh, oh, I have to assume uh, self adjoint and positive, sorry. Positive. I mean, uh, we can we can relax that condition later on, but let's just assume positive. I mean, um, mm -hmm. positive. Uh, no, it's positive. I mean, uh, positivity for operators is not like positivity for linear particles. When you say positive, it means it's non-negative. 
it can it, they can be zero in the spectrum. Uh, the definition of being like, and yeah, I mean, it's a different kind of positivity, but it, I mean, yeah. right. Anyhow, so we have this, um, uh, okay. So, um, because, I'm, because I'm assuming it's positive, so lambda is bigger than equal to zero. Right. Okay, so in other words, uh, what is E lambda? Lambda is just kernel of this uh, operator uh, p minus lambda, right? It's just kernel of p minus lambda. Okay. So e lambda is finite dimensional because uh, this is an elliptic operator. We just changed the zero order part of this. We didn't change the positive degrees. So this is a uh, so this is a finite dimensional since. Uh, P minus lambda is elliptic. Um, e lambda is sorry, is finite dimensional, and also because this is self-adjoint, the two of them uh, for different lambdas are orthogonal to each other. Well, you know, I remember, like, I even mentioned this uh, in terms of completeness and all of these things from last uh, lecture, I remember now. Okay, so now the goal is to prove that uh, actually, uh, I mean, what we have here is that um, indeed, C infinity of E is dx sum E lambda over lambda and then completion. Oh, I'm sorry. Nonsense. Sorry. L2 of E. This Hilbert space uh, can be uh, decomposed into these orthogonal subspaces, uh, which are indexed by uh, eigenvalues of lambda. Okay, so this is the um, statement. Of course, one thing you should know this is that there can only be a countable number of lambdas since L2 of E is separable. We discussed that. Right? So L2 of E is separable implies that uh, only a countable number of lambdas appear. And because this space is infinite dimensional, so there's going to be infinite number of such things. Uh, so this much we can prove without any um, further analysis by what we know. But um, we have to prove this. So what we want to prove is uh, two things. So this is completeness. And we want to prove uh, that uh, these lambdas actually go to infinity at a certain rate, right? And second is, so this is one, is completed. So goal one and goal two is uh, prove that, uh, so because it's uh, countable, you can, you can order them in terms of lambda one, lambda two and so on. So on, and then uh, we can just say that uh, lambda n goes to infinity um, at a certain rate. I mean, um, you see, there, there are different things here. So, I mean, it's not obvious that these lambda n go to infinity. They could be a countable infinite number of eigenvalues just in some interval. So it's, it's um, inconceivable. So first of all, that doesn't happen. So you go, 
But even if you prove that they go to infinity, uh, still we have to prove that they go to infinity at a certain rate. So how precise we can prove this rate is, uh, the better information uh, you have obtained. But we have to, we have to do this. Uh, um, this and so on. I mean, the, okay, so I, I will talk about it soon. But uh, I'm not sure, maybe I gave this example, but let, let me give you an example, maybe from last time, I don't know. I, I, I have a feeling that I'm repeating something that I did last time. So let's look at the case of G equal to S, M equal to S1. And P equal to Laplacian, which is minus D2. So let's take S1 to be R naught Z. So the, 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 the perimeter is one, length one. Okay, in this case, we know the spectrum. Uh, I mean, uh, we know this uh, kernel of uh, I mean, lambdas we know. This is N squared. Uh, so lambda N, I, I would say lambda N equal to n squared, and n equal to zero, one, two, so on. Uh, but we have to notice dimension of E zero is equal to one, but dimension of n is equal to two for all n bigger than zero. Right? I mean, the two eigenvalues here are phi n equal to e to the um, I want the name. Yeah, no, that's fine. E to the um, i n x and phi n tilde equal to e to the minus i n x. So these are we can we can we can easily get. So, the, so there is a degeneracy, right? Uh, so, the, so this list, so uh, the list is a very, very important to list it with multiplicities, uh, counting multiplicities. Multiplicities. Okay, by, I mean, so in this case, our list is going to be like zero. One, one, right? Up to right, again, two, two, three, three, four, four. And it's a growth of these numbers that we want to know how, how, how fast they grow. Would be the squares of these numbers, right? Big pardon. It would be the squares of these numbers. So one one. Four, oh, I'm one, sorry. Nine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What 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 am I doing? So this is four four. Uh, sorry. Zero one one. Then n squared would be four four. Oh, yes. Then nine nine. Shoot. I wrote the uh, the thing for Dirac, but that's not even correct for Dirac. <laughs> uh, 16, 16. So, uh, yeah. So, so let n of lambda be equal to number of uh, eigenvalues less than or equal to lambda, counting multiplicities. And then uh, the result uh, that I will prove using uh, some other results, uh, using this heat kernel expansion. So we'll prove some. Heat kernel expansion. That n lambda, 
T equal to Laplace in at least. I mean, N lambda grows like C, some constant, universal constant that depends on dimension of the manifold N times lambda to the power um, uh, 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 dimension over two plus lambda goes to infinity. Okay, so um, CM uh, just depends on M, which is dimension of M. It does not depend on the manifold. So there's a universal constant. And then uh, M over two is, and this is, uh, as lambda goes to infinity, it's a constant, universal constant. So this is Wise law. Um, so that's the beginning uh, theorem for uh, spectral geometry. But I mean, so we, 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 I mean, this will be a byproduct of what we'll do very soon. But uh, anyhow, so um, so now what I need to do is to prove this. Um, okay, I also checked last time, by the way, that uh, the spectral decomposition in this case is a result of Fourier scales, just for us not Fourier. Okay, so um, yeah, I, I checked it last time. So let me write it here. For m equal to s one, the n uh, orthogonal uh, spectral decomposition. Um, follows from uh, Fourier analysis. So this is a consequence of Fourier analysis. Uh, you don't need this uh, more complicated analysis. This complicated analysis is because you don't have group structure in general. So you, you have to resolve um, hard analysis to prove this. But again, it's, it seems it's like a team here, right? Over Lie groups, you can do a lot of things using much less analysis. But the, over general manifolds, you have to do a much more complicated analysis. So uh, we will do these examples later on. So, uh, and of course, I, next time I have to prove the results. So. Any questions? Oh, well, so I think the volume as well. Um, oh, yes, of course, <laughs> yes, of course, I'm sorry, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, um, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 that's a full part. I mean, here, um, yeah, 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 I mean, there is sometimes, times, so how should it go, should it be divided by the multiple times by the multiple times? Um, so no, it should be over the volume, right? Because the, 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 the bigger the volume is, uh, oh no, no. Oh yeah, I mean, the bigger the volume is, the lower the tones, the faster the M grows. So they are, they, are, they are lazier, so they pile up more on uh, kind of lower parts. So it should be top. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It's good to have an expert on spectral geometry. <laughs> Thanks. It was bad, yeah. <laughs> Especially for me. <laughs> Almost made the living. <laughs> Very good. So, yeah, I mean, I was going to write a spectrum of Laplace and spheres. Spherical harmonics. There, there are a lot of goodies there, so uh, but that's okay. So we'll we'll do it later. Yeah. Any questions? Think okay. Okay, so I stop the video then, and then we can just. Uh,